Hello, golfers. Welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better, faster. Could we make a deal? Let's compress this ball before fall. Let's get after it. What is required to compress a golf ball? Compression is the golf ball smooshing against the face of the golf club. And well, I guess the first thing is what makes it happen in the first place. The club shaft is leaning forward. We're going to take our iron and de-loft it slightly. So whenever I hit the golf ball in the middle of the face, okay, fine. But take my seven iron and make it into a six iron. I compress the golf ball. Bottoming the golf club out on the front side of the golf ball also helps it hold bunch, doesn't it? And guess what? They're terribly related. So what I wanted to go over today is a couple really easy ways that you can actually learn it. But guess what? Check your grip. One of the main reasons why people fail to compress the golf ball is they have the club face too open and they stop their whole body and flip the club face as a means to square the club face. So you have to take out the essential reason for doing it wrong. Get your grip straight. Number two, a lot of golfers open the club face wildly during the backswing. No bueno. If I, at any time, if I get the club face wacky out of alignment, if you will, if I get the club face too open, I am gonna be forced to once again, stop everything and snap the face shut. So make sure that you're not opening it up here more than about there where it's still facing sort of toward the ground. Make sure at the top of the back so that we are not having that club pointed toe down because when we do that, folks, you can't recover from it. You have to be a tour player. I, I can only think of two tour players that played from all the way down, and I can't even remember who they are. And Rory McIlroy is probably the most open. Well, it's Rory McIlroy. But even he goes from a very, very neutral club face he begins to twist it closed early in the downswing. So you can see at the top of the backswing, his wrist was a little bent, glove logo more toward the sky. Well, I guess here it's not, but he came down with the wrist pointing down more. He's squaring the face early. That's what I want you to do. I want you to square it early, at the very least with a grip, at the top of the backswing, square it some more, give it a little twist, and make sure you don't somehow fan it open on the way down. A lot of people do that trying to compress the golf ball. Ironically, they're trying to increase the lag by bending. It's called extending the wrist. They're increasing this wrist extension, which opens the face. But look, it looks like lag. But of course, now I can't play golf. So everything goes to hell in the handbasket in order for me to try to square the face. Got it? So open faces lose races. There, I said it. Okay, creating lag. Folks, listen. Lag simply means that this thing wins the race over this thing to the ball. So wait a minute. Are you saying nothing? All I have to do is make my golf club go past the golf Yes, that's all you have to do. And we're going to start like this. Oh, wait a minute. It's like I'm standing on a boat, fishing boat. And I've got this line full of fish, this net full of fish. I'm going to try to pull it on board. I'm going to pull it with my legs. And by the way, if we don't have, this is very important. This is a shift, a horizontal weight shift. Now, folks, this is maybe not the biggest deal in the world for a driver, but it's really important. But boy, if that ball is on the ground, you this shiftiness is a very big deal. I'd like to see you go like this. Take your line, your, uh, your, your net full of fish. I want you to pull it onto the boat. Notice I'm going over this way. I'm actually, what I feel like what I'm doing is just stepping and squishing the ground. So I'm going to squish, pull. Now in that case, I'm pulling that club right past the golf ball. There he goes. Isn't that cool? And we're going to do like 300 of those. You're going to notice something really, really cool. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to squish and pull 
the club right past the golf ball, and that's helping me turn my torso through the golf ball, okay? So what we do, we have our little video, okay, the hands went right past the golf ball, all right, here we go, we're back, we're squishing and pulling and actually turning, oh my goodness, he's going to do squish, pull, turn, here, squish, pull, turn, oh baby, now that thing got compressed. Now, if my ball goes off to the right, well, can you do this too much? No offense, you probably can't. But yes, there are some people who can. That ball went right, and what's that a sign of? Did I, did I have too much forward shaft lean? Yes, if you had indeed too much forward shaft lean, the ball would not get airborne. But you have no speed yet, right? I'm in that golf ball 50 miles an hour. Now, when we do this, if it does, when I get it back up to full speed, so I'm not going to really worry about where it's going at low speed, okay? But if I get it with a little bit of speed and I go squish, turn, and pull, wait, I might lose a little balance. All right, it did go out to the right. Now, what we have to figure out is, was it an open face or was it a path too far out to the right? Okay, no problem. I'm going to try to close the face some more. So I'm going back, squish, turn and pull. Now I felt like I put a little bit more twist on that club face as I did it. Okay, time out. We need some data. That ball went right of the universe on me. Ha ha. Indeed. The lovely Mrs. Trackman has told us that Dunnigan, 62 miles an hour. Guess what? You don't have the face too open. You're swinging the club 10 degrees out to the right. That's helpful data. Now, how might I not get that if I didn't have a, how might I get that answer if I didn't have a track man? Well, the golf ball just flew right, a lot right, with zero curve. Zero curve means zero difference face to path. Get it? Now, if that ball had started right and curved a lot to the right, then I would know the face was too open. All right, so there I am coming in this way. I got to get this path a little bit straighter. So what am I doing again? I'm pulling my line of fish onto the boat. I am squishing, turning, and pulling. All right, here we go. All right, folks. I must have done something different because it went straighter. Oh, I got the speed up a bunch. Oh, my goodness, the ball didn't go up in the air very high. That's cool, though. I like it. Now, let's take a quick minute and take a look at that. Right foot, left foot. So it's going the same direction as the video. Here we go. The old guy goes back. And now, there's going to be some shiftiness. Squish. You can see I lit up this left foot a bunch. 72% by there. 80%. There, my hands, that glove hand has passed the golf ball and a good little measurement for yourself, 84% of the front foot, the entire left arm has passed ball location before the ball takes off. That's a real good sign. And there's some turn and we've got 88% of the front foot by there. Okay, so you could see the step in, which I've talked about before, the squish and there's some turning and pulling. I hope that makes sense. It's a really, really big deal. I'm telling you, you've seen this drill a million times. I'm sure of it. This little extra club shaft. Okay, fine. It's a JD speed stick that's not made up yet. Okay, listen. If I pull along the club shaft, I'm not going to get hit. I used to call this the beaten stick because I had another shaft stuck out of here, and it was hard, so when you actually through the head too soon. If you had too much push against the shaft, you get a beaten and you get some feedback. Well, negative feedback for doing it wrong and positive feedback, no beaten. It reminds you of growing up as a kid. All right, so here we go. Get that right under so it should fit in there kind of nice. All right, we're back and I need to keep pulling the handle along the long end of the shaft 
keep pulling it, and it ends up, I end up pulling it actually down and then up and around. <clears throat> Except I'm not pulling it up like this. I'm not doing this into impact. I'm standing up a little bit. I'm raising my shirt buttons up. Here we go. Back. There we go. That's a great drill. Never touched me. And I'm feeling the squish, crush that ground. Okay, crush it over this way. Turn and pull. Okay, and that is sort of the sequence. It's a really good sequence for you. It goes back to our shift, turn, lift, but we're adding some what we want to do to the handle of the golf club. When you get to the top of the backswing up here, you have to be super sensitive, and I need you to do it wrong. I need you to push up against the club shaft, okay? We're going to do that here for you right now. We're going to go up, back, push up. Folks, how do you do that? That feels just like I'd never played a sport in my entire life. There it goes. Oh, my goodness. I have to shake that one off. I may have to have a beer. Okay, now, take the same guy, and instead of pushing up against it, I need to feel like I'm pulling along it. I'm pulling the Q-tip out of my ear. I'm pulling it backward and downward and a forward and a roundward. Okay, I'm pulling it, a little like I'm playing the violin here. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. All right, two finger grip. Pinky and ring finger, pull. There you go. This is a great idea. You can do it with the right hand. Pull and pull up. So you can see the pull direction is going backward first, isn't it? And then it goes all the way around. Hey, look at that. There's my shot. All right, now we do it correctly. We're back. And that pretty much had the whole thing. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, that ball went really, really low. Now, when you're doing this, if you do overdo it and the ball starts going really low, no problemo. Check your ball position. Is it too far back? Okay. Now, number two is, okay, listen, you might actually, you might be one of the four people on earth that need more push against the club than pull along it. I can push against, I can pull along, okay? You might be one of those folks who needs more pressure against the shaft. No problem. In that case, instead of pulling along it, I'm just going to put more pressure against it. Folks, this is not, it's not difficult and it's not complex. However, it takes full attention, okay? What, what part of golf doesn't? Oh, yeah, taking penalty strokes. Here we go. A little more push against it. Let's hit this one. Let's see, that was 75 almost. Can hit this one a little higher with a little more push. Wait a minute. I hit the wrong ball. Of course, that can happen when you push too much too soon. All right, that went way. Oh, I swung fast. That's cheating. It went quite a bit higher based on how I'm applying force to this club. Remember, folks, all you get, you get pulling, pushing, twisting the face open or closed, and tilting the shaft. I want you to start at 50 mile an hour golf swings. Pull that net full of fish. Pull, squish, pull, turn, and progress upward. You can do this. Please, while you're doing it, do not move the ball back in your stance. That would be cheating. But if you're in the middle of a round of golf and you're hitting it fat, cheat. Put the ball back in the stance. Hit him great. Get after it. <laughs>